Assalamu alaikum and welcome once again to Chai with Rahima. Um, on my program, we have uh, I have two guests. Um, um, to my right is uh, Mrs. Rukia Hussein. She is the CEO of is it Green a care, a care home? Care yeah, home. Green Mantle Care. Green home. Mantle Care Home, um, and she will be talking with us about care for the elderly um, in our community. And also with us is Professor Parvez Harris, who is a biomedical uh, science lecturer at De Montfort University, and he will be also t talking about um, our health. Uh, and the arsenic in rice and what is good for us um, and in old age what we should be looking out for um, and looking at health care. So um, I'd like to welcome you both to the program today. Uh, Rukia. Thank you Rahim Afa. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank and you Professor invited. Harris. Assalamu alaikum Sister Rahima. Wa Thank you for sir. inviting me to this uh, show. Uh, I look forward to discussing with you all. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Professor Harris, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, simply because I, I, you know, I think it's it, it's very important that we talk about um, some of the areas of research that you've recently been conducting, and the importance of that research and its impact, particularly on the Bangladeshi community both here and in Bangladesh, and um, a, about how we've been over excessively um, affected by COVID-19. What you think are the causes of that? Um, so, if you wouldn't mind first telling me a bit about yourself. Sure. Yes. Uh, yes. First of all, about myself, uh, I was born in Bangladesh and came to the UK at the age of 10 and lived in Cardiff. And uh, during that time in the 1970s, most of our community actually uh, worked in the restaurant catering industry. That was the most common uh, type of work that most people did. My father had a restaurant in Cardiff, and it was called Golden Bengal. Uh, he named it Golden Bengal after, uh, after Bangladesh became independent. And so uh, I, we lived in Cardiff, and uh, he was uh, really someone who wanted me to go into education rather than enter into the catering industry and work in a restaurant. It, that was unusual during that time, because at that time, most of us Bangladeshis, we thought about uh, you know, making money and going back to Bangladesh. It was not our desire at that time to stay in the UK. So it was, uh, it was understandable that most people thought that instead of, uh, you know, going to universities and spending many years studying, it may be better to open up restaurants or work in a restaurant. But my father was exceptional and the most important person really who was instrumental in my education, the person who really took care of me on a daily basis and encouraged me is my mother. And today I think is a good day uh, to talk about her to some extent because uh, today's discussion is also about care as well, care homes and looking after our elders. And therefore, I have my mother with me and I uh, would like her to be here. So here she is. You can see her. She, she, uh, she is uh, staying with me. She used to live in Cardiff. And uh, recently, I, uh, you know, about nearly a year ago, I brought her here. Uh, to Leicester to take care of her because before, about a year ago she was doing everything for everyone. She was cooking food for everybody and uh, looking after everyone. She was always busy taking care of everybody. She had eight pregnancies and we are five brothers. Three other pregnancies, uh, you know, did not work out. One of my brothers passed away at a young age. So she all her life sacrificed uh, for us and now in our old age uh, I had an opportunity given to me by Allah uh, to have the honor of looking after her and I ask everyone's dua that I can do the job because there is two things that can happen to me either I do a good job in taking care of my mother and get the reward from Allah or acceptance from Allah at least or I don't take care of her and annoy her upset her and be bad to her in which case uh, I will uh, deserve the punishment from Allah so this is the situation uh, that I'm in. After many years, I've got her uh, staying with me. Uh, I'm in Leicester. She was in Cardiff. Now she has come to join me in Leicester. Please make duas that I can take care of her. Yes, so sir. this is my background, just very brief one. Uh, I then went on to study at university and did a PhD in biochemistry at UCL, uh, Royal Free uh, Medical School. And thereafter, I joined as a lecturer at De Montfort University. 
in Leicester and then slowly got promoted to senior lecturer and then finally I got promoted to becoming a full professor. So I'm currently a professor of biomedical science at the Montfort University in Leicester, engaged in research and I'm trying to do some research, trying to do some research for the benefit of the Bangladeshi community, the community from which I come from. So today we can discuss some of these things uh, as we go along uh, during the course of this program. So, so my mother is here, please make duas for her, she's not very well. So, uh, um, Assalamu alaikum hala. I, I can never do enough for her. Thank Assalamu you. Assalamu hala. It's nice to have you on the program. Okay. It's so, okay, bye. So, she, uh, yeah. so, um, May Allah she, subhanahu wa ta'ala reward yeah. you. Thank you. Um, Thanks very and much. And make indeed. it easy for you because obviously this is uh, a situation that many people find themselves in, but not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to take care of um, their parents. And of course, they, they're, as much as we would like to say there isn't, there is a stigma attached. However, um, I do think that, you know, uh, as we're in the UK, there's, you know, we, as we do, we do our best. And shukar alhamdulillah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with the fortitude to be able to look after her. But I think, Sister Rukia, um, you know, and at this point, uh, you know, when people come to you in their care homes, uh, I'm sure it's with some you know, anticipation and it's with, you know, deliberation and a lot of anxiety. And how do you put them at ease when they're bringing their parents to you? Well, first of all, um, hearing uh, our brother, Professor Harris, and his dedication to his mother, uh, you know, she's exceptionally lucky and he's exceptionally lucky to have the opportunity uh, to be able to, despite his uh, very such a demanding career and, 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 and to put his mum um, you know, at the center of his attention uh, and feel that, you know, he wants, he's seeking du'as from everybody that he can continue with his responsibility. Alhamdulillah. Allah will reward you, Professor Harris, in abundance. And I, I just hope that we, all of us were, you know, are lucky enough to have that opportunity. I mean, I've, I've, you know, been in the healthcare sector for the last 20 years. Um, and, you know, uh, and I have owned uh, a care home in the Essex area that's for the last uh, several years and it has been um, it has been very emotional it, it can be very emotional and especially um, you know the, the, the my home uh, is mainly serves the Caucasian community um, you know it's just because the location it is um, however, you know, you, you can see the difficulties and the stress and the anxiety a lot of family members has uh, and the, the decision they want to make um, to put their loved one into care. It's very difficult, it's very challenging and not everybody would want to put their loved one if they can. And, and as a provider myself, um, my ultimate responsibility is to ensure that I am you know, I, I am being able to provide a, a service uh, that is um, not only just uh, regulated by the Care Quality Commission and in the local uh, government sector. However, my responsibility is towards towards the family member and the loved one, often of the um, f uh, residents that are that are placed in. So for me, it's very important that I work uh, very closely with family, and I have an. Uh, um, open communication where I always tell my family member that they can ring me at any time. I spend as much as time outside my NHS career, which is full time. I spend in, you know as much as time um, in my business so that the business is running safely. The family members are satisfied. The, the care of the of the residents are centre of attention, and it's very important these these uh, residents are being cared, you know, person-centered cared and, and they loved and they respected. And especially uh, th last year, we, you know, as you know, the whole entire country has uh, suffered, the care home particularly, with the pandemic. It has been very overwhelming, it has been very difficult and a and lot of anxiety from family members, in, you know, uncertainty what will happen and you know especially these elderly people if they contract COVID um, you know there's the chance of survival it's it's um, it's very riskful so 
it <laughs> has been hard but um, it was important for me to be on top of everything you know yeah ensure my staff is trained my staff are supported because I am the backbone as a provider it's my legal responsibility and as a private provider I can understand that your concerns are not only with those that are in your care but also with those that are taking care of them because as we all know um, NHS staff um, as well as those in the care home my sister is also a manager uh, of a care home and um, one of the things we did see is uh, with regards to protective um, clothing etc they weren't uh, the, they weren't a priority and also um, you know the do not resuscitate aspect of things were slapped on and lots of yes. families who weren't allowed to see yes, their loved ones yes. what are the age you know what is the age group of the people that are in your care I've got um, I'm registered with the CQC from 18 years uh, and, and above so my youngest uh, at the moment I've got placed by local authorities 42 and my eldest had been 103 up until April. Oh, that's such a shame. It's they are, you but know. I, I, when I spoke to you earlier and you were telling me about uh, one of the people in your care is uh, a 93-year-old woman and her daughter yeah. is 70? She's 96 and her daughter is 78. Wow, you know, and, yeah. and then you can see why sometimes, you know, it's not possible. She has been, after. in fact, she has been end of life uh, since 2018. Mm -hmm. And every time she deteriorates, I'll get a phone call from the daughter. And then she will ask, because she's the only daughter, she'll ask me, is this is it? This is the end of my mum. And I, I have to reassure. And that so must be so emotionally it is, it is hard for you. It is very emotional. I mean, uh, they, they, they are, every individual of my residents, they're amazing. Mm. They have got their own character. And there's a lot I have learned over the years. And it, it's, it brings me joy. Every night I go to feel, uh, bed feeling that I am so grateful to be in that position. I never thought I would go into business and become a businesswoman beside the business that I would go into a specialty of dementia yeah. because dementia in our community still it's far from understanding and the diagnosis still can be difficult and often you know uh, we've got the myth of um, possession of genes and etc etc you know and it takes difficult we don't understand how dementia and dementia is not just one form there's many forms of dementia and um, as, as we're going into a break and shortly and then we'll be coming back to um, Dr. Harris who I think would like to um, perhaps ex Professor Harris who would like to expand on that and some of the reasons as why we have ill health within our communities and also the issues surrounding the stigma that's um, you know that's attached to uh, our elderly and um, those with dementia so um, do stay with us um, we look forward to seeing you after the break uh, and, and you know listen to a, a lot more um, information that can be given to you and hopefully you will call in if you have any questions the number is at the bottom of the line and we we'll look forward to seeing you after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Chai with Rahima for those who have just joined us um, we are joined in the studio uh, by uh, Ms. Rukia Hussein um, who is a um, owns a care home and also by Professor Harris who is a lecturer at De Montfort University in Leicester. Um, Professor Harris, um, just before the break we were talking about um, elders and, and, and the elderly care and also looking at some of the reasons why there's a lot of ill health um, that we want to talk about some of the reasons why there's a lot of ill health in um, our first generation um, of Bangladeshis in the UK and whether or not there is uh, a, if there's much difference between the illnesses in men and the illnesses in women and why that might be and if you could uh, give us a little bit of a background of the research that you've take undertaken and what the results were sure আমি কিছু কিছু বাংলাও বলবো কারণ আমাদের অডিয়েন্সের মধ্যে অনেক বাঙালি লোক আছে অবশ্যই 
সেই জন্য যারা হয়তো হু আর নট এবল টু স্পিক ইংলিশ ওর আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ইংলিশ ফ্লুয়েন্টলি আই থিঙ্ক ফর দেয়ার বেনিফিট আমি কিছু বাংলাও বলবো তো আমাদের কমিউনিটির লোকরা কিন্তু যারা ফার্স্ট জেনারেশন ওরা বাংলাদেশের একটা এনভারনমেন্ট দে ওয়ার লিভিং ইন বাংলাদেশ ইন এ সানি ক্লাইমেট সারাউন্ডেড বাই ট্রিজ ইন দ্য ভিলেজেস ইন দ্য কান্ট্রি সাইড ফ্রেশ এয়ার ফন্ড উইথ ওয়াটার ফ্রেশ ফিশ ফ্রেশ ফুড দে ওয়ার লিভিং ইন এ সর অফ লাইক এনভারনমেন্ট দ্যাট ওয়াজ ক্লোজ টু নেচার okay so always surrounded by trees plants animals and so on and from those villages in silet the greater silet district people moved from there around the 1970s 1980s to come to the uk arta environment ta ki ekta notun ekta environment e move hoy ise in this environment the situation is different especially in london people lived in uh, council homes you know uh, big flats hardly any trees around there are hardly any nature around inner city lot of pollution in the village in bangladesh in in the in silet district and so on there is very little you know air pollution the air was uh, air quality was good the food was uh, in those days in the 1960s and 70s was more pure more organic so the people were much more healthier so let me give you an example amar dada dadi both of them uh, you know lived to the age of probably 90s actually and this was uh, this was really due to the fact that they had a very active lifestyle আমরা উঠান আসি উঠানোর মাঝে আমার দাদি গেছেন আমরা পুকুর আসি পুকুরের মাঝে আমার দাদি গেছেন এখানে আমাদের সুইমিং করছেন শি শি উড গো অ্যান্ড হ্যাভ আর বাথ দেয়ার শি উল ডু সুইমিং অ্যান্ড থিংস লাইক দ্যাট ইউ নো দেয়ার ওয়াজ এ ভেরি ন্যাচারাল লিভিং পিপুল লিভড উইথ দ্য এনভারনমেন্ট দে ওয়ার ভেরি অ্যাক্টিভ ডুইং থিংস দে উড গো আউটসাইড অ্যান্ড বি এক্সপোজ টু দ্য সান সো দ্য ক্যান গেট ভিটামিন ডি ফ্রম ইট অ্যান্ড 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 দেয়ার ফোর দেয়ার ওয়াজ এ a lot of uh, circumstances that enabled them to do that okay because of the uh, you know warm climate they could go out and you know uh, do things outside and not be confined inside the house the other thing is the social interaction i think this is an important point that we must not miss out manushe manushar loge kotha howa sujog ase there were much more opportunity for people to talk and interact with each other so mental health মানসিক রোগ মানুষের মধ্যে শারীরিক রোগ আছে এবং মানসিক রোগ আছে আমাদের দেশের মধ্যে যখন মানুষ ছিল তখন ফিজিক্যাল অ্যাক্টিভিটি করছে আগের কথা বলতেছি ফিজিক্যাল অ্যাক্টিভিটিও ছিল সানলাইটও ছিল গুড ফুডও ছিল আর মানুষে অত বেশি খাইছেও না দেয়ার ওয়াজ অন অ্যাবান্ডেন্স অফ ফুড স্পেশালি ফাস্ট ফুড সুগারি ফুডস এগুলোর অ্যাবান্ডেন্স কম ছিল সেই জন্য মানুষের মানে স্বাস্থ্য ভালো ছিল আমার দাদা দাদি দে লিভড টু দ্য এইজ অফ নাইনটিজ বিফোর দ্য ফার্স্ট ওয়ে বাট লেটস লুক অ্যাট মাই ফাদার অ্যান্ড মাদার my father died in october 2019 you know he was in his early 80s now the situation between my uh, grandfather and my father is very different my father developed diabetes he had coronary artery disease and so on and the reasons are something that we must look into what happened as a consequence of migration from the villages in silet with this beautiful environment countryside lots of plants and trees to an environment in uk when you are working during the nights mainly and this is an important point i like to point out most of the people our community bangladeshi community they worked during the night time okay so they're night workers restaurants were open till 3 am in the morning in cardiff uh, you know if, if you look into the details people are opening restaurants even up to 4 am in the morning so they will work during the night and they will sleep during the day and that has an effect on the body we have a biological clock circadian rhythm our body has a biological clock that is why when you migrate when you uh, fly to another country you know uh, we have uh, you know jet lag and because of the time difference and so on so our body is tuned to sleeping in the night and staying awake during the day in bangladesh people would sleep during the night during the 60s and 70s they will go to sleep at 7 after isha and namaz they will go to sleep because there is not much electricity there is nothing to do outside people will go to sleep and they will wake up very early in the morning when the sun rises for fajr prayers and they will be active and doing things so there was much more activity and they will sleep during the night so one of the biggest thing in my opinion that has been missed and not discussed is the lack of sleep the disruption of sleep the disruption to the biological clock the circadian rhythm when the father when my father was uh, he had a restaurant called golden bengal in cardiff he was uh, you know working in the restaurant and he would came he come to uh, the house late at night my mother would wait for him so this means my mother's sleep was also disrupted and my mother's sleep was disrupted even more than my father because unlike my father who would sleep during the morning until almost you know around 10 o'clock in the morning my mother would have to wake up earlier so that we can go to school so if you look at the details of what has happened to our uh, women amar 
যেন আমাদের মা আমাদের চাচি ওদের যে অবস্থা সেটা যদি আমরা একটু দেখি খেয়াল রাখি তারা কিন্তু অনেক কষ্ট করেছে আমাদের ফিসনে আজকে আমি ইউনিভার্সিটির একজন প্রফেসর আমার ফিসনে আমার আম্মার যে একটা অবদান আছে আমাদের মাদের যে অবদান আছে আমাদের বাঙালি কমিউনিটিতে কোনো কোনো লোক হাই কমিশনার হয়েছেন কোনো কোনো ওই যে আমার বোন এখানে বসে আছেন উনি একজন ডাক্তার এবং একজন কেয়ার হোম ওনার এই দিন এই ধরনের যেন আজকে উই হ্যাভ অল অফ দিস ব্রাইট ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল সাকসেসফুল ইন্ডিভিজুয়ালস দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান লুক আট মেল অ্যান্ড ফিমেল বিহাইন্ড দেম ওয়ার আওয়ার মাদার্স অ্যান্ড আওয়ার মাদার্স ওয়েন্ট থ্রু দ্য মোস্ট ট্রাজিক ইউ নো কন্ডিশন অফ বিং ইন এ নিউ এনভায়রনমেন্ট an alien environment to what they were used to they did not have uh, you know sort of uh, you know socializing was reduced they were confined into their houses they were not able to do much physical activity and at the same time what i think is a big point and i'm hammering on it because i think this is something that needs to be thought about so that we don't do not continue to suffer the disruption to sleep is been linked with many different diseases including cardiovascular disease diabetes alzheimer's disease even the chances of being you know more vulnerable to covid-19 infection has been shown to be uh, higher in people who do night shift work so those people who work during the nights they are more vulnerable to covid-19 infections so this disruption to the sleep and my mother would you know also during the time when she had we are five brothers so boys if someone one, some one of us was outside for long periods and we are you know it's past 11 o'clock my mother would be worried she would not sleep so there is stress lack of sleep disruption to sleep stress all of these things are contributory factors why the bangladeshi community has been adversely affected did you know the fact that we have the highest incidence of diabetes compared to any other ethnic group in the united kingdom the highest by yeah. far the highest why there are reasons that we can discuss and that is why we need to do research my analysis shows and this is some of the ideas that i'm proposing and i'm suggesting and this is what you need to discuss is there are several reasons why the bangladeshi community is adversely affected one of them is their uh, uh, lifestyle poor lifestyle and then there is diet lifestyle in the sense that for example i told you the lack of sleep disruption to sleep in terms of diet which is something that i have been researching on is uh, uh, that bangladeshi community consumes most rice compared to any other community in the uk and indeed the bangladeshi community in bangladesh also consume a high quantity of rice and i blame this high consumption of white rice okay we consume mainly white rice this is the point to keep in mind we consume the highest quantity of white rice compared to any other community in the uk and our research has shown this is a finding from my own research and we have shown as a consequence of that bangladesh is get consumed to chemicals that are present in high quantities in rice whether they are good or bad too much of a good thing can also be bad so for example in terms of uh, glycemic index you know in terms of sugar that you can get into your body rice provides you know a, you know really high concentration of sugar into the body and therefore this high consumption of rice can be attributed to the high incidence of diabetes in bangladesh but it's not only that we are also inactive we are the least active of the different ethnic communities in the uk and furthermore as i've told you we work during the night times in restaurants we work during the night time as taxi drivers mini cab drivers so what we are doing is that we are accumulating a lot of lifestyle dietary habits which all contribute to make our situation the worst and that is why we are the in the worst position in the league table we are in the worst position with respect to uh, type 2 diabetes and we really need to change this because what's not happening is research and discussion about this and our mothers are really badly affected by this you know they are also very inactive in the past you know uh, if you look at the bangladeshi uh, ladies who are now in their 70s like my mother if you look at the data the bangladeshi ladies our mothers they were the most fertile of any women from ethnic any ethnic group so we had more the birth rate for bangladeshi women was the highest it's changing now recently but in the past during my mother's time during the 70s 60s 80s and 90s bangladeshi women had the highest number of children compared to others and this of course is very challenging first of all looking after the children alone in bangladesh there would be the whole village the whole community would help but when you moved here you're all alone you're in your house there is no one else to help so you know i talked about disruption to sleep the disruption to sleep is not only caused by the husband who is a taxi driver or a restaurant worker coming late from work and the uh, wife is waiting for him but is also the worries about children their education if they are behaving well or not you know a reputation of the family 
all of these things have contributed to create stress and difficulties in our community. So unfortunately, you know, these are the key factors and we really need to change many of these, uh, 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 you know, sort of aspects if you are to reduce our risk of uh, dying from many different diseases. Uh, also, um, by, you know, uh, because there's quite a lot of, um, you know, focus on uh, the Bangladeshi community with regards to ill health, I mean, there are many, many, um, uh, different ethnic groups that suffer from vitamin D deficiency. I don't think we're actually told very much about how vitamin D deficiency actually um, has an impact. Um, you know, it, uh, how it gets played out. I think after um, we're going to be coming up to a short break, we're, we're going to be coming up to a short break in, in just a couple of minutes' time. But before that, I'd like to hit on the um, you know, so that, you know, after the break, we can discuss some of the things that we really do need to understand. You know, like, you know, instead of rice, what can we eat? What, what is, what is um, a good level of exercise? How do we, how do we look at uh, mental health in our um, elders? So, so, you know, people who are, you know, you know, who may have to enter care homes, you know, what, what do you do at a care home in order to look after the mental health and the physical well-being? But also from a, a professor, from your point of view, uh, our, you know, Amriki Dahutam Parmo, Zetu, you know, mental health, Vishunia, how do we look after ourselves? How do we look after our body? And what can we do to change that cycle if it's even indeed possible? For some of us, I'm sure it's too late. I, for one, am part of the fertile group that you talked about. I have six children, mashallah. So, um, you know, I thank the one for that. I'm also, I'm also part of the diabetic, cardiovascular, um, you know, all of those groups that you, that you mentioned. So, so for me, it's of interest to, to ensure that, you know, my children, I was born here and I feel that I'm very energetic, but obviously not energetic enough. Um, so, you know, I'm a nizajanami jantam saize. And I want next generation Zilan, you know, I don't want them to be affected in the same way. Obstructive sleep disorder, you know, it's not just those who have a sleep disruption because of work or life balances. It's also those who have illnesses. But how can you, how can you, how can you do, um, change some of the way of thinking um, and, and, and what we're going to do? So we're going to go to a short break and then we'll, we'll come back. Um, please do stay with us, viewers, uh, and we'll be back shortly. And thank you uh, for staying with us. Um, welcome back. Um, I'm going to just go straight back, actually, to Dr. Harris, uh, Professor Harris. Professor Harris, um, you know, if you could kindly tell us what we can do, if we were to perhaps divide this. So, if it was perhaps something to bear in mind when you're 20 to 30, 30 to 40, or 30 to 50, and what changes you know, uh, and what changes we can make during, you know, in, in those kind of age cycles for a man and for a woman, because as we said earlier on, Amra uh, Amra, you know, for the female, for the woman of the house, the responsibility, Sheshorina, Khomenna. I'm sorry, Hazi. Amra, you know, Baf Bai, Shopai, Zamaya, you know, Tara Hamtika, Tara Sholtar, Edify. খানি <laughs> Sinta tahle beshi, I am a comfort eater. So mm. there are a lot of us who are comfort eaters. A yeah. lot of us who don't eat if we're stressed. Me, I eat if I'm stressed. But there are a lot of things that we do habitually. So how do you break the habit? What new habits can we form? Amra kilan, kilan kida khora zaize to amra health wise, amra kichu change for tampari. Yes, I, I mean, you actually have, uh, you know, yourself, you having six children clearly indicates an example of a Bangladeshi, you know, woman and, uh, and their life. And the situation for those people who are older than you 
has been even more tougher because you actually grew here, you are actually born here in the UK. But the ladies like my mother who came from Bangladesh and you know came to Wales uh, and lived in Cardiff, it was a much uh, a bigger struggle and therefore they uh, experienced a lot more difficulties. And there were not many public health guidance messages at that time. There weren't that, that many messages so telling true. people that look, go out and you can get exposed to the sun, you can have more vitamin D, eat more. Uh, oily fish that contains, uh, you know, good nutrients like vitamin D and so on. So there won't much advice given and therefore uh, we became victim to that. Now, for example, research shows that, you know, deficiency in vitamin D, lack of sleep, lack of physical activity are amongst uh, a number of different factors. So, for example, you know, working during the night and not during the daytime, most of the time being, you know, in the dark, being confined in the houses and so on are more uh, likely to help in the development of disease, dementia. And there is an interesting fact I want to tell you from hospital uh, comor comorbidity data. You know, when people go to the hospital to, and they analyze what conditions people have. Bangladeshi women, this is an interesting fact that you may want to know. Bangladeshi women have the highest prevalence of dementia, Alzheimer's disease. And this is, this is something uh, worrying and concerning to me. And I know of, uh, you know, people in our families who have dementia. And I ask why, you know, these people are quite young and why are the Bangladeshi community most affected by dementia and Alzheimer's? This is the sort of research that I am doing. And I've come to the conclusion that it is a combination of a lack of sleep or disrupted sleep stress. and lack of physical activity and, and low stress. vitamin D. So what you need to do is identify ways to, uh, you know, improve our lifestyle, improve our diet so that we can delay the development of disease, whether it is diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, dementia, and so on. So you need to find ways that helps to reduce the risk of developing this disease. So physical activity is definitely one of the things we need to do. Our mothers were more physically active in Bangladesh because they went out and to the you know the front yard of the house. They went and did some different activities. Now in the UK, they do a lot of work inside the house, cooking a lot of food and things like that most of the time but activity in terms of working has been reduced because they are often in especially in london and places like that people are in council ho houses and you know it's not really an environment which favors people to go out they don't have a garden where they can you know go and do things and therefore lots of different things actually makes us more vulnerable if you look at restaurant workers i've noticed restaurants you know and when i'm in leicester and looked at the kitchen and i saw you know, five, six, seven people working in very small amount of space and they're supposed to social distance. How are you going to social distance in such a small space? Five, six people working together with very little ventilation. There might be some ventilation, but not much. And often, even if they have the mask on for a short while, they take it off. So if you remember in the second wave, there was a higher incidence of deaths in the Bangladeshi community. It is very likely that those people who went back to work in the restaurants, uh, they, you know, one of them, two of them maybe had COVID-19, they passed it on to their colleagues. Then we have the people who were working in taxis because they became very busy as well during the uh, second wave. And they would, uh, you know, work during the night and they would get, pay, uh, you know, passengers who might have COVID-19 and they will, uh, you know, get infected and thereafter they will get, you know, serious conditions. So the, the precise reason why Bangladeshis were more affected by COVID-19 is not clear yet. But I would say that the occupation that the Bangladeshi people are engaged in uh, favors transmission of the virus, number one. Number two, they live in multi-generational homes. So there are lots of people living in the house, uh, you know, mother, father, grandchildren, and so on. And all it needs is one person working in a restaurant, being infected and bringing the virus into the house and passing it on to the grandmother or the mother and so on. So our occupation is actually quite focused on some specific areas. There are reasons for that. The you know, Bangladeshis have not diversified in terms of occupations in doing different things. They've been working mainly in uh, restaurant catering sector, retail sector, and in taxi uh, driving, and now in healthcare in terms of, for example, care workers and so on. And, and in the transport system. All of these areas are areas where you are more likely to be crowded, uh, people facing, there you are likely to get exposed to the uh, virus more easily. And therefore our occupation has been too much focused on areas that are harmful. We as a community need to discuss that our next generation should not all be working in restaurants. Our next generation should, all not, uh, should not all be working as taxi drivers. We need to really th deep, think, think deeply about uh, how we can 
do other things and improve uh, our community as a whole. Of course, we need restaurant workers. Of course, we need taxi drivers. But you know, we are disproportionately represented in these sectors, which are risky for many reasons. If you look at a kitchen environment, you are exposed to the fumes of all the oil that you are burning and all the chemicals that are being generated from the burning of spices and so on, and in a very crowded space as well. If you look at a taxi driver, he is in a taxi, not exposed to the sunlight. He is in a, by the roadside getting pollutants, air pollution, PM25, this particulate matter that is in the air from the fumes of the cars and so on. And he's inactive, sitting in the, in the taxi for hours and hours, and especially working during the night time when the immune system is supposed to be weaker. And therefore, it is suggested that night shift workers are more vulnerable to being infected, not to mention about the fact which I've already told you that at night time, you know, if you walk, that means you are sleeping during the day. So they're not going vitamin D because you're I mean, not going out. So the vitamin D level is low. So we need to, you know, think about the occupations we do, change our lifestyle and also change our diet. Remember rice. I mean, the question for you, I've never said that. I've never said that, but I'm going to say that 19th July, the government, you know, is suggesting that we get rid of our masks, etc., etc., etc. There um, and and because of the vulnerability amongst our Bangladeshi community, uh, what would be your advice um, on, on, on that? Would you? I, I mean, for me, I would say move forward with caution. Money is a tohon horin na hena kintu atu ushare tata. You know, don't, don't just give up straight away and just rip the masks off. I think there's some areas where you probably still need it. But I mean, uh, how, what would you advise? What would you, what would you this support? This is what I will say. This is what I will say. Uh, if you look at the second wave data, okay. the deaths for the Pakistanis and Bangladeshis increased, whereas for the other communities, it decreased. Achha. So our question will be, that our Bengali manushar death second wave was increased. Whereas West Indian is an Afro Caribbeans and others that are their death rate actually went down in the second wave. There's something happened in the second wave that, of course, uh, it out to help out, for example. So, our people work mainly in the catering sector, so they will work more in the restaurants. So, if one was infected, they will transmit them to the others. So, definitely, what you are saying is absolutely right. After the 19th of July, when things open up, we have to be very cautious. Our immune system has been weakened because of you know, our lifestyle and our diet have contributed to weakened immune systems. We are more vulnerable. People have talked about genetics and so on. I don't really think it's genetics. I really think is that we, are, we have already got a lot of disease conditions because of our lifestyle and diet. Okay, so these are the main reasons. And then we do jobs that makes us more likely to be infected. So these are uh, definitely things that we have to think about. So if I am going to go and work in a restaurant, then I have to make sure that the ventilation system is very good so that the kitchen environment is less uh, you know, uh, free of fumes and there is some sort of social distancing so that we are not next to each other, breathing over each other. So I think we have to be very cautious, otherwise we will have in this, uh, in, uh, you know, the next after the 19th of July, uh, sad incidences. So I think, you know, keeping a social, uh, keeping distance between people, I think is important. And perhaps, you know, to be on the safe side, you know, wearing masks and everything is necessary. I mean, I just give you a simple example. One of the things that happens when people go to Hajj is when they come back from Hajj, guaranteed they've got a cough. Guaranteed they've got a cough. And people say that I had it as well. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I've been. And I had cough and everything. And people say, if you have the cough, then that means your Hajj has been accepted. Mm -hmm. So why are people getting Hajj uh, cough? Why? What is the reason for it? Because it's overcrowded. A lot of people in a small amount of space. People are uh, breathing over one another. The droplets, you know, the virus is carried by yeah. droplets in the air. So when someone is breathing next to someone else, whatever that person is breathing, virus, bacteria, whatever it is, will go to the next person. So I think my advice to the Bangladeshi community, whether you are a taxi driver, whether you are a shop worker, you know, retail sector, or whether you are, uh, you know, I said taxi driver, restaurant worker, or retail worker, I think you need to look at the environment you are working in. Because the environment has got die. A casual environment room with the mane fresh air is it is it possible to have good ventilation or not? Taxis with the driving go open the window and things like that, at least during the summer, so that there is good ventilation and so on. If you don't do that, then sadly Amra Manush Aro Morbo. Risk assessment horror dorha. Restaurant is an Amra Manush has got that's Amra Bangladesh Manush don't you say restaurant or has got your restaurant kulamar abbar or restaurant as 
কিন্তু এই রেস্টুরেন্ট যারা কাজ করে যারা কিচেনও কাজ করে সব কাজ করে সামনে দিয়ে কাজ করে বিশেষ করে কিচেনও যারা কাজ করে তারা যেন পরিবেশ তারা যেন আবহাওয়া যেটা কিচেনের আবহাওয়া আছে এটা কতটুক মানুষের স্বাস্থ্য লাগে বা লাগে খারাপ দেখা লাগবো আজ দ্য ম্যাটার অফ ফাক ইফ ইউ লুক আট দ্য ডেটা ইন ডিটেল ফ্রম দ্য অফিস অফ ন্যাশনাল স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স দ্য গ্রুপ দ্যাট ওয়াজ মোস্ট এফেক্টেড ওয়ার দ্য ট্যাক্সি ড্রাইভারস আন্ড শেফস শেফস ওয়াই শেফস ওকে দে কুড বি দিস কুড বি স্ট্রেসফুল জব দে স্মোক এ লট Uh, they may you know don't do enough exercise therefore they have uh, you know uh, diabetes and other conditions that, that makes them vulnerable but i think it's not only that kitchen is a crowded environment especially if the restaurant is busy or a takeaway is busy six seven eight people are working in very close space all you need is one of them to be infected and the virus will go to the rest and i know of these cases so um, my advice is please think about it which is shukra alhamdulillah and like uh We have a caller. Can we take uh, um um we'll take a caller. Um hello caller. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Wa alaikum assalam. Ji, apne ke hoida? Koi ta ke hoida ring kora? Amar naam Shahab Ahmed. Ami Rampur te hoida. Acha Shahab. Kala sen. Ji bhalo alhamdulillah. Acha. Amar question ta holo je amra to bangali amra rice khai normally. Ar rice amra staple food. এখন আমরা যদি রাইসের বদলা আমরা কিটা খাইতাম পারি যা যেগুলো আর কি আপনার পুষ্টিকারক বুঝছেন নি রাইসের বদলা আচ্ছা প্রফেসর আমি তো বেশি ইনফরমেশন एक्चुअली দিস ইজ ভেরি গুড क्वेश्चन বাই ইওর ভিউয়ার আই থিংক হি রেজড এ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট হাউ ক্যান উই Uh, improve our diet you know there are several things we need to change to make sure that our community does not have the worst health record you know the the community that has the worst self reported health record of the bangladesh is number 1 diabetes number 1 uh, dementia in terms of hospital records bangladesh is number 1 so there is a lot of uh, bad statistics that we have and most of them are due to diet actually diet is the key factor uh spicy food and these spices sometimes can contaminate adult adult trends and things like that we bring uh, you know we eat lots of shudki shudki can contain pesticides shudki ma je pesticide takte pare so our mm-hmm. exposure exposure to That's toxic okay. chemicals arsenic o pesticide o bacteria o viruses o amra bitre jeta stomach er majhe beshi bhag jay onno community oto beshi jay na pakistani dukane giya jodi dekho oto variety jinish nai shutki nai oto beshi indian holo rokom amra shufari khai fan khai zorda khai so overall amrar body stomach e onek kichu sojjo korto onek kichu fan shufari shutki tar pore giya bibhinno dhoroner mas bangladesh theke ana hoye jeta modhe bala mondo shob kichu ache so overall Uh, we are exposing ourselves to harmful chemicals and we are also not sleeping well and we are also not doing much physical activity so uh, your viewer said how can we change our diet i think this is a very important subject and very important issue i believe that we have to modify our diet we have to reduce our rice consumption of rice i have done some experiments if you want to call that in my own home uh, with myself i've tried to cook for example other cereals that are nutritious that are low in arsenic and more healthy in terms of uh, not having too much sugar not having too much carbohydrate and one of those cereals i think that is good is quinoa or quinoa or quinoa this is something that comes from south america but actually it also grows here in the uk and some uh, people in bangladesh are also beginning to grow that in bangladesh as well so this is quinoa which is like rice but it's a bit more crispy uh, so you know it's something that you could substitute instead of eating uh, you know a bowl of rice Uh, you could have half of uh, that as being rice and half quinoa or maybe having wheat or some other cereal so we need to diversify if you look at the community the population which lives the longest in the world number one in terms of longevity that is how long a community lives it is the japanese japanese live the longest in the world their male and female live the longest the question is is it because uh, you know their diet is less in rice no they have a good amount of rice in their diet but they do not eat as much rice as we do let's say for example the bangladeshis are eating 350 grams of rice the japanese are eating about 100 grams of rice but it is not only that japanese are physically active they are always active they are always on the move and the other thing is they have a lot of fluids lots of water and they have a lots of soups our traditional diet amra bangali traditional diet i would say is as good as the japanese because we have a, japanese have a lot of fish bangladeshi has have a lot of fish but also bangladeshis take also lots of fluid shira koi amra when you make again salon shira takhe that means there is a lot of sauce it was not a lot of fried food in the past you know amar dada dadi tara 90 plus live korse 
they did not have a lot of oil in their foods. They did not eat a lot of fried foods because it was luxury to have a lot of oil. They did not have a lot of sugary things either. So their diet was more like Japanese diet. And that is why they are living into their 90s. But what has changed is that now we are eating a lot of fried food and we are also still eating a lot of rice. So combination of things is actually not favoring us. So reduce your intake of rice, substitute it with quinoa, uh, you know, wheat and other things so that we actually, uh, you know, become less dependent on rice. Definitely we need to, need to change this. Ami jani amra bangali, mache bate bangali. Thank you, Baya. Thank you, Baya. Um, Ruki, I'm going to come to you because uh, we don't have much time, but I'd like to ask you, um, because, you know, you have a lot of uh, elderly people, vulnerable people within your care, what is it that you advise for people to do to looking after their elderly? What do you feel that is the major need of those that are in your care? For our community, I would say if we can keep our loved one at home and if we can look after them, it's the best. If they go into care, um, it's not going to be the same as looking after by being looked after by your own children or own family member. But um, you know you are exposed to other risk as l as much as the the these um, uh, institutions are very regula uh, regulatory. However, you cannot eliminate risk, and um, you try to give person centre care. You know that's what we're supposed to, but it doesn't entirely meet a lot of our our people from our own community. How our expectation. Um, how our mothers and how our grandmothers have been raised and in the way their life has been lived so for me I'd say you know we should be we should try our best like Professor Harris he's doing great job looking after his mother he's very thank dedicated you. and we should thank continue. you um, believe it or not I know it's it's gone really really <laughs> fast yeah and we've actually come to the end of our really show. okay but yeah. Ami I, I want to thank you both for coming in thank you you know thank you. thank you for coming into the studio thank you professor um, Harris for uh, looking at all of these things and giving all this advice thank you viewers uh, for watching in um, the uh, and I hope to see you in two weeks time um, we will be uh, looking at other topics and looking at what we can do for the young um, and the youth of today so inshallah I hope you'll join me uh, two weeks from today uh, thank you once again to my guests thank you Rafa for inviting thank you thank, bye. You. thank you very Thanks much, very much for indeed. thank you for having me thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much for, for joining me assalamu alaikum